So, very good morning. I am Dr. Rajesh Kenna from uh, BIT University Chennai campus. I belongs to the School of Computer Science and Engineering. So, uh, today uh, I am going to talk about the inter-process communication. I uh, will talk about the basic fundamentals of the inter-process communication. So, uh, so uh, before knowing into inter-process communication, uh, we should know some basic terminologies. Uh, if you know that, if you are good enough on that, probably you can understand uh, the process communication in a very better way. So uh, let me start with uh, some of the basic terminologies. Uh, we need to know what is a process, uh, what is a process, what is an independent processes, and what is a cooperating processes, and related and unrelated processes. So we will see one by one. Uh, then we will, uh, we will see about what is the inter-process communication, what is the advantage of that, and what is the issues when you are doing uh, inter-process communication, what different mechanisms are available for inter-process communications. Because nowadays, you know, uh, everyone is uh, uh, you know, working on the distributed communications where this inter-process communication is, you know, really a vital component, right? So, what do you mean by process? All the time telling it's a process, 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 right? Uh, pro process means it's a kind of program that, that is under execution. Uh, say for example, when you say a program, program may be, it's a written component. Written component may, may we, we may say this is a e document, okay? Uh, it comes with the extension of .c or .doc, anything. It's a kind of any instruction. It doesn't, you know, got any life for that. But there is an instruction, but uh, there is no life for that. Once those instructions, you know, get the life, uh, becomes inactive, then we can say it's a process. Right. So, so when so, when, so uh, when you say a process, what components actually a process need of? What components it need of? Say, uh, yep, memory you need. So when you say simply about memory, what is memory? What kind of memory it needs? It's a data memory. Okay, uh, data in the sense if you consider a very simple program called addition of two numbers, that there are two variables are involved. Right? Addition of two number needs two operands. So memory is important. So memory to store the data, and there are two different kind of data. One is uh, initialized data, and the one is called un uninitialized data. Okay. So uh, not only that, suppose your program is consisting of so many interior in, uh, inside functions. Okay. In what sequence the function has to be executed? That is very important. For to track that, for every program it needs one more memory or one more address space. We can say it's called a stack. Okay, stack will you know will uh, will execute a program in a proper sequence. So for a simple program, we need definitely need some other spaces, the other spaces for you know sequencing the information or sequencing the information or storing the data. And sometimes your program may involve some uh, dynamic memory locations. When I say it's a program, a program when it runs it needs some space. Okay, so for that you should have the data structure. Okay, that kind of structure will help you uh, out for down the middle. So, uh, for every program, a heap is also needed. And a program has to store its own information for that, a program which needs a code sequence. When you say a program, program, it needs so many stuff. Apart from that, it needs a CPU time. Without the CPU time, I think nothing will be happening for that. And this process uh, should also should uh, should have the uh, should be, you know it should interact with some other file. So it needs to know or it needs to keep track of how many files it has been opened for its own processing. So that information is also uh, recorded. Then, what is the status of the process? Whether the process is uh, running state or the process is in the wait state or block state, you know that indication should be done. Then only the operating system will perform a multi-programming <coughs> multi programming stuff. So for a simple addition program, you know, you need you need this much of this much of energy and this much of information, uh, then only a program will become as a process. Okay? So when you say process, process, process needs all the components. Uh, it needs all the components. So that is very important. Then when you say a process, there are two different kinds of processes. One is uh, independent processes. Another one is a uh, deep cooperative process. What do you mean by independent processes? Uh, when you say independent, suppose a program is running, if the program doesn't affect some other program, then that is called an independent process. Okay? It, it, they, they are those processes are like a sense. 
Okay, the same thing will always, uh, you know, uh, you know, living for their own, okay, for their, yeah, for their own peace. So those kind of processes, we can say, it's called independent processes. It's not that affects another process. When you say uh, co cooperative processes, uh, a process which affects the execution of the some other process. It's called a cooperative process. Okay? Uh, you know, someone always wait for somebody. Okay? Somebody, they, if they want to do something, definitely they will wait for their friends. All the time they will be going together. So those kind of process, they can say it's a cooperative process. Okay? What is the use of the cooperative process? Uh, use, suppose that when you want to perform some sequential operations, or your task is a collection of more number of operations and in which sequence that program has to be executed, the set of process has to be executed. That point in time, this cooperating process is so helpful and so useful. In that particular time, okay, a program may give its own information to another process during the runtime, then that concept is called a process. I guess are it, are it clear, right? See, if you want to, uh, if you want to know about interprocess communication, if you know these terminologies, then we will uh, come into uh, interprocess communication. <coughs>